Aubrey, if you can hear me, you can, um, if you hit accept, that should get us started. There we are. Hello. Perfect. So I'm so psyched for this conversation. Um, you know, you're you're in the hot seat, but you're really going to be in the hot seat because now you're over <laughs> in Holland getting ready for um, national team uh, match this Friday. So um, so I'm psyched. I'm psyched to have this conversation with you. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, let me let me set it up uh and then we'll we'll just jump right in does that work yeah sounds great all right so um the goal of this and the reason i i call it uh win first in the mind is that i have two really big beliefs about mental performance and and the probably the foundation of that is that you have to do it ahead of time, right? You have to win first mentally before you can go out and then win physically. So the whole concept is, is that, is that we're trying to be proactive, not reactive to, to training the mind. If we believe in training the body, um, then we should be proactive in how we treat, train the mind. And so that's the first part. The second part is, is that I believe in giving back and doing good for the world. And so the goal of why we're doing it like this, rather than doing a normal podcast where um, we could edit things and we could cut things right. out and all that kind of stuff is that I want people to be with us. So I, I don't want it to be something where it's just you and I, I actually want it to be something where it's um, where it's, you know, where people can, you know, put something in if they want to put something in or literally be with us and then we finish it with five, 10 minutes of mindfulness, uh, if we can, if we can do it in, in the, in the time frame that I want to do it in. And so, and the goal is, is to have people join us with that as well. So it's kind of like this cool. introduction to um, mental game stuff at a really high level, um, but also uh, creating a community of people who are just trying to get better. And that could be get better as a, as a pro athlete. It could be get, get better as a college athlete. Um, it could be get better as a mom, as a dad, as a business person. The goal is, is just, you know, in this super difficult, uncertain time that we're just doing something that's positive, um, hopefully for, for other people and trying to create, create a community. And so that was kind of the, the idea behind how we did it this way. All right. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thanks for including me and I'm looking forward to chatting and, you know, creating something together and, and getting something out of this myself. Awesome. So um, let's start off with, you know, you and I had an opportunity to talk like probably about two weeks ago, I think, and just got into an awesome conversation. And I think you were actually out in, I want to say Colorado, but it may not have been Colorado, yeah. by Colorado yeah. for national team camp. And, um, and, you know, we really got into talking about the mental aspect of, of, of performance. And so when, when was your start of realizing, like, if I really want to, to do this and continue to get better, that I can't think about it all as just mental, I'm um, sorry, physical, I need, I need to start to think about the mental. Um, kind of towards the end of my college career, I feel like I had tapped out everything else. You know, because when you grow up, you've got, you make all these gains physically and technically and tactically, and then you hit pros and everyone's good. And yep. you kind of realize, okay, everyone is at the peak um, with their technical, tactical, physical abilities. But hey, there's this mental side of it that no one really talks about. And um, I realized that the margins were so small, but like, yes. especially the goalkeeper, Yes. Um, I was really leaving this whole mental side of sport unexplored and untapped into. Um, and it quickly paid dividends for me. So um, from there, it was just kind of like, okay, this I need to spend more time focusing on the middle, mental side. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is so like that, that whole everything that you just said there makes so much sense. So like, I always talk about, like, as we go up in performance levels, as every time that we level up it, it really looks like 
like a pyramid, really. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, at the youth level, when you first start, everybody plays, everybody's going to, you know, join. And every time that you go up, it starts to get like this. So by the time you reach the level that you're at, it, everybody's good. Like there is no such thing as bad at this level. Right. And then it becomes <laughs> like, okay, really, like, how do I keep myself focused? How do I keep calm in pressure situations? Um, how do I bounce back? you know, because it's not going to be pretty all the time. And, and there are going to be some real disappointments and that, like, how do I not let that kind of snowball on me? And I think um, for me, at least one of the things that I wish is that we understood that at an earlier age. So like, instead of having to meet that moment where you're like, oh my God, I need to right. do something. What if we said ahead of time, like this is going to happen at some point. So yeah. let's do it proactively. If you could go back, um, would you have done it earlier? Or is it just something where you're like, I don't know if I would have listened. Yeah. You know, well, I think it I... takes a lot of self-awareness, um, which I wouldn't say that I had until my later. Oh, no. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. I, uh, I can hear you. Am I back? Yep, you are. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, I have a screen time reminder, so I reached my limit for today on Instagram. But <laughs> gotcha, anyways, gotcha. Um, I was saying that uh, I think it takes a lot of self-awareness. Yeah. Um, so I, I, like, I was told this, like, oh, the mental side, you know, it's one of the pillars, like, you got to focus on it. But um, I kind of brushed it off and just didn't really think it was that important. Um, so I can't say it wasn't like no one told me right. that but it just kind of took uh, a little bit of right becoming self-aware knowing um more of my strengths and weaknesses and um just kind of observing my thoughts and being able to know what i'm inclined to think or respond so just knowing myself better mm -hmm. to kind of combat like okay my response in this scenario is you know, a negative one, how yeah. can I get, can ahead get that? Of that? Yeah, right. And, and change it. So like, what, when it was brought up to you, and you kind of waved it off? Why? Do you know why? Can you remember back? I was probably pretty prideful. <laughs> was it just that which just like, I'm, no, I don't need that. That's for other people type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm really into yoga now. And before I'd be like, that is just way out there for right. weirdos. Yeah. Um, so kind of similar thing with mindfulness. Yeah. And, and before I think mindfulness has kind of had this taboo of like, you know, it's the yogis and the Buddhists. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not yeah. until I think recent years that it, you're really like hearing about it and seeing yeah. how it can be beneficial for everyone, not just right. like, the extremes you know it's this story is so like i i can't tell you how many times i've heard this story <laughs> right, right? <laughs> and and you know and but the other side of it is non-stop of i wish i would have listened so like there's okay. this there's this whole like this is normal you know it's almost like this is the you know even though you mentioned the pillars and and uh Right. You know, right. and how everybody acknowledges it. In fact, a lot of people say, no, the game is 80 percent mental or whatever. And yet we still be like, but I got that one instead yeah, of exactly. instead of real. Yeah, that's the pride again. Like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and yet at the other end of it, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to get to talk to people like yourself and people that are in the position of I have actually made it right. So I have made it. And yet that's when so many realize like, no, I, I like, I completely put myself at a disadvantage and or had like needless suffering, for lack of a better yeah. word, <laughs> as a younger athlete, where if I would have just said, you know what, why not invest in this, like, so many other things would have become more clear for me. And I just probably would have handled things better. Not that there's not value in the struggle of, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and those things, but Right. So what was it that allowed you to gain the self-awareness? Do you, do you remember the moment of like, I'm not handling this well, um, it's time? I think it was a gradual process of untying my identity to my sport 
and becoming less emotional emotional about outcomes mm. um i used to like in college you wouldn't want to be around me if we lost <laughs> i and believe you i feel terrible for my family my friends you know i was just a grump um no fun to be around but yeah. and you know i thought that was i honestly thought that was like normal and just showed i cared um but and I definitely care. I, I still hate losing the same amount, but um, I'm not as emotional about it. And I realize that that response doesn't get me anywhere. It just makes me bitter and it's not productive. So, um, you know, I'll give myself maybe like a minute or two. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, I got to move on. Yeah, you're hitting on a, a really important topic. I think the world of sports in general and anything that actually requires pretty high performance has this this probably faulty logic that if you care you'll just be ruthless on yourself yeah. on other people you'll mm -hmm. be mean you'll be sad you'll be all these things and that means that you care and because you care you're going to get better if you if you do all that stuff mm -hmm. but the reality is is that that does not like equate actually but how did you get beyond that because it's such a powerful um like messaging um that no i can still care deeply in fact i can get better and better and want to get better master my sport and at the same time i don't need to stay in the suffering for hours days yeah. you know i don't need to be mean like how did you get there yeah I kind of just realized it wasn't working for me. It wasn't life giving because it, it was a good motivator, but it only lasts for so long. Right. Right. But right. the more consistent motivator is just wanting to be the best I can every day and improving. And I kind of switched to more of a growth mindset, um, yeah. Yeah. was more detached from the outcomes and just focusing on, did I give my very best today? And really that's all you can control. So once I realized, okay, I'll do my part um, and let the rest be, um, it just, yeah, things got much better and, and kind of, a, you know, a trial and error process. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, gradually, it, it was much more free. I played more freely. Yes. Um, and it, yeah, it, it was much better. <laughs> so, it, it, and I think that's so important because that's actually, you know, the... You know, you have to play free, willing to go for it, willing to kind, especially as a keeper, like you really can't hesitate. It's got to be like, sure. this is, I have to get off my line. And, and there cannot be that second moment of, of thought, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're at your best, that's how you're playing. And yet when you play with a more fearful, like I, I can't lose, I can't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. I can't be because of me you actually play, you're, you're, you're a condensed version of yourself. So that momentary hesitation can come out. And so I, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but I'm going to go through the four, there's four um, steps, tiers of motivation. And the actual base level of motivation is fear. Like that's the one that's like mm. most primal for us, right? We don't want to be ashamed. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be yelled at. We don't want to be benched. We don't want to lose. That's a fearful motivation. I don't want to lose a spot. Yeah. Okay. The next one, the next step up is reward. I want something. So I want to be named the starter. I want to be named also. I want it. I want all these things, right? So yeah, it's reward that I'm looking for. I want to just be recognized. Then we go up one more. And it becomes uh, obligation or duty. So the third step up is like, I have this obligation to do these things. I'm motivated by mm -hmm. my duty. But the highest form of motivation is actually love and passion, right? So if I love mm -hmm. something, if I'm passionate about it, I'm going to go for it because I want to go for it because I want to be great. And I'm okay with the idea that on the other side of that love, is potential pain, right? Because if I love something and I go for it and I open myself up to doing it, the downside of that is that there is the opportunity to be hurt, you know? And, yeah. but every great thing 
that's ever happened to you in life has been on the other side of that, not on the other side of like, I'm going to sure. like do something <laughs> in a condensed way, but I'm going to go for it in my biggest way. And, and so when you're talking to me about your own evolution, that's what I began to hear is that you really started to, to try to connect with the parts that you're like, I love this enough that I'm willing to kind of go for it and let's see what happens rather than I'm just going to do it because I'm fearful of all the things that could maybe not go my way. Yeah. Yeah. That's 100%. fair. Yeah. Spot on. Can um, you, can you talk about that in your evolution going from college to pro and then, you know, and now obviously you're, you're at national team camp or, or actually in, in, uh, getting prepared for a friendly. Um, so can you talk about that in your evolution, that concept yeah. and, and how yeah, it grew? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I got a college scholarship to play at Wake Forest. So um, definitely duty there. You know, I had to go every day to training because that's why I was at Wake Forest. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I can't just not show up that I wouldn't be able to attend the school. Yeah. So, cause there were definitely days where I'm like, don't really want to do this. Yes. I actually remember like there were trainings where I could get away without having to dive. Don't tell my <laughs> college coach that, but I was like, Oh, I gotta go to class after this. I don't want to be too gross. Like, <laughs> um, so I definitely, you know, was just kind of going through the motions, um, had to be there. Didn't really have a love for a game for the game, but, um, for me, soccer was the end to wake forest. It got me to a great school and yeah. it just, the next logical step after being a good player in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely college, it was, it was more of a duty um, kind of towards the end. It would transform a bit more. Um, it was with duty was third. Yeah. No, oh yeah. Reward. Okay. Yeah. So it was definitely reward and duty because I wanted the accolades. Yep. I wanted to yep. be known at yes. Wake Forest. Yep. I was, um, you know, all American. I thought like that would give me a little, you know, swagger around campus, but no one really cares. Like <laughs> maybe for a day max, but yes, um, yes. I kind of believe that realized the emptiness of it. So, yes. um, and then I became professional after um, I graduated. I started playing overseas first. And again, it was kind of, the next logical step and it was a means to see the world um yeah. try it out i had thought i wanted to go to medical school so it was just kind of uh, a gap year like let's go mm -hmm. play pro overseas maybe in the states and then i'll go to med school where i can make make a lot of money and um uh, you know be a doctor um but what surprised me was honestly how much I did grow to love soccer because it was a choice. I didn't have to do it. I could quit at any moment. Yeah. And yeah. women's pro soccer players are not compensated very highly. Mm -hmm. So there were really no incentives. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't no like pain. getting my, my tuition paid for yeah. at, at a great college. It wasn't sure. that. So you were like, hey, you know, I'm doing this on my own. I'm deciding that I want to pursue this yeah. rather than feeling like the obligation to continue with it. It's yeah. powerful. Can you, um, I, I know I'm interrupting because I want to hear no, about like, like that next step, but I, but you're, you're actually like just crushing some, some great points. So <laughs> that, no, but that, so I, I named it as if you're only in one of those motivational spaces, but you can be in more than one motivational space. So like okay. you can have like an influence, like maybe one of them was like the big one. So maybe obligation was, you know, the biggest, but the other one might be uh, that you did like the reward, you know, you did like to be recognized, right. but you hit on something massive. So like I made all American and I'm like, I'm going to walk around campus. Everybody's going to be like, Oh, <laughs> there she is, you know, and all this. And you're like, it, it, it was kind of cool, but like, it didn't, it didn't create that feeling that you were potentially thinking that it might. And, um, you know, I, I talk, um, a little bit about, you know, two years ago with the mystics, we won the WNBA championship and it was awesome. It was everything that a championship should be. Um, the team really loved one another. 
uh, coaching staff love the players. Players, you know, love the coaching staff as much as players can love coaching staffs, you know, and, and like, but the relationship was there. The, the, it was a cool, it, it was meant to be what it was, you know, cause some championships can be awesome, like, because you won, but like some right. of that stuff's not in place. This was what it was supposed to be. It was awesome. And, you know, you win party that night, you know, but the next morning I got on a flight at like 1030. Um, and I actually had a client meeting that, that afternoon at three o'clock that afternoon. And like Sunday night, was flying out to go to another, you know, thing that I was doing. And, and one of the things that I realized was like, we went to this, like the highest level you can, and it was awesome, but like life did not change. And I think we get too caught up in that the trophy or the next thing that is going to be the thing that is the, that creates the fulfillment. And then we reach it and we're like, uh Oh, it's, it's not that like it wasn't that like it was awesome, but it's it doesn't really change after a couple of days. So can you yeah. keep going with that? Because I think that was the moment that you moved into potentially like, no, I'm yeah. like, I have this passion that I'm realizing now. Yeah, well, like you're saying, there's always going to be the next thing. You know, you see it with uh, Michael Jordan, like how many championships can he win? And it, yep. it's still it's still never enough. You yep. win the championship, and the next day it's like, okay, next year we got to win again. Um, but, um, sorry, what were you wanting me to? <laughs> I'm sorry. On? So the so the the part about the the idea of you realizing, like I'm like that's not where I'm going to get my fulfillment. Like as much okay. as those things were awesome, I I have to almost whether you like actually thought I have to connect with something more or it just kind of became something that you started to to pursue but it sounded like you realized like that's not where I'm going to get my ultimate fulfillment from for sure yeah um and I would say a lot of it is from my faith as well um because for me ultimately my identity is not in sport um like I was saying before I was really emotionally tied to our wins and losses yeah. But as a Christian, my identity is in Christ. So that helps me to keep, um, you know, just a perspective on life and what's really important for me eternally um, is, and, and I've come to realize people don't remember, you know, I couldn't tell you who won the World Series last year or right. yeah. the Super Bowl. I don't know anything. People don't right. remember that. Um but yeah. what is, you know, what people will remember is how you treated them as a human being and your personality and the way you love others. Um, so it just, yeah, it gave me more of a freeing mentality to go out and play with passion and out of love for the game and not being so confined by, oh, I've got to win. I've got to yeah. get this award. Because really that's, yeah. that's all out of, out of my hands anyway. Yeah, the um, one of the training sessions that I do with teams that I work with is on that idea of, um, and we actually call it like a spiritualness, but like it doesn't need to mm. be necessarily like this, this religious spiritual, I mean, it can be for sure, but it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be. But really what it means is just something bigger than myself is what this whole thing is about. You know, and I need to recognize that there's something way bigger than wins and losses. And yet at the same time, I want to master what I do, you know, like, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean like, I don't care about this. It just allows you to put it into perspective by understanding that there's something way bigger that we're all about and put on the earth to be. And, and so my sport is this thing that I do, but it is not me. Yeah. And again, you know, so, so much of this is about freeing weight instead of playing with all that weight on me. I want to play as free and as big and as, you know, and full as I possibly can be rather than put all that weight upon like every win and loss is like everything. And cause it ultimately, yeah. like you said, it's, it's really not, you know, yeah. it really, especially isn't. with the team sport, you know, yeah. right. <laughs> There's only so much you can do. <laughs> That's so, some rough seasons. <laughs> saying that, 
okay, saying that is I absolutely I happen to have a decent amount of keepers um, on yeah. my client roster, and keepers are the, a whole their own ball game, right? Oh, like yeah, keepers we're are their own whole, <laughs> Yes, you are. Um, and anybody that's ever been involved in the sport of soccer knows that keepers are. You guys are a little bit different, um, and in in a wonderful way. But that's true, and the position is really different than every other spot on the soccer field. Yes, you're one of 11. Yes, everybody matters. But there is like a whole different vibe for the keeper. And keepers, I think, also put upon themselves mm -hmm. a whole different uh, level of, of expectation. Can you address that? And then and then even more maybe why the mentality and, and, bat and really training a mentality is so relevant if you're a goalie? Yeah, we definitely put a lot of extra responsibility on ourselves just because the game starts 0-0, zero, zero, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't concede a goal, you at least get a tie. So yeah. the mark is, is almost that perfection from the beginning. So you kind of think like, okay, like I just got to keep it this way and it, right, at least we tie. So there mm -hmm. is that added responsibility of being the last line of defense. Um, of yep. course, it passes 10 others, but you are the last one. So right. um, I think that's that's where that comes from. Um, and then the nature of the position is it's a bit more reactive, whereas everyone else can be more proactive. Like, you're not going to see me as a goalkeeper, like, dribbling the ball, trying to score. I just right. kind of stay back and of course there are aspects you know communication organization that are more proactive and limiting their chances before they even come but for the most part i'm kind of chilling back there waiting for the other yeah. team to have a scoring opportunity all right so there are two massive things that happen one you well three i'm going to name three one is the proactive part i you know one of the things that i try to do with all the keepers that i work with is like your like biggest job might be your communication and organization mm -hmm. because if you don't get shot on then you get a clean sheet right so, like the better you can do with making sure everybody's where they, like be loud talk that's something within your control mm -hmm. um but it's really hard because there's two parts like you don't get a lot of opportunities you could be watching and watching and why mm -hmm. i mean a 90 minute match you could like you could be watching like literally like 89 minutes and maybe have a minute where you are touching the ball. Uh -huh. And so, uh, and that one's huge. And then the other one is, is that you must bounce back. Like, so if you do get scored on, you don't have it, you have to bounce back. There mm -hmm. is no, I'm going to stay mad uh, for long periods of time or stay at, you know, whatever. Now I'm not saying it doesn't happen sometimes. I'm just saying that those three things, you have to be proactive Mm -hmm. You have to stay focused for like these like really minute moments. And then lastly, you have to bounce back because if you stay stuck in the negative, it's going to be that much harder. So can you talk about those three <laughs> things? Like how have you come to to understand those three parts of, of the mental aspect of being a goalie? Yeah, for me personally, I love the stadiums where they have the video boards because if I can see the goal, I'll watch it back. And then after that, like, I just get rid of it. Um, okay, you have a process. Yeah. All yes. Right. Yes. Um, because if I'm like visualizing it in my mind, thinking, oh, what did I do wrong? What could I have done? Um, then I'm in my head and I'm not focused on the game. Um, and I try to over communicate almost for the next five minutes why because, that's great why i love that because i realize if i'm not communicating i'm in my head perfect so it yeah. it just makes me be present yes. um maybe i'll just like focus in on my breathing if there's nothing to say yeah. but just something that can bring me back to the present moment and Beautiful. not being you know in my head yeah. trying to analyze or yeah. critique things it's all just about being there in the game what matters i'll now? worry about it later <laughs> right what matters now is what yeah. by, by over communicating that five minutes post 
you're forcing yourself to move on from it by, mm-hmm. by communicating right now. That's, this is what matters right now. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to talk. I'm going to direct. I'm going to organize. Fair? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and how about that, like, intensity of, like, especially in a match where maybe, you know, you guys are possessing the ball, you know, at a high rate and, you, you know, it's down at the other end um, a lot. Um, how do you stay, you know, just kind of locked in so that in the moment, if a counter does happen, you're ready? I almost make a game of it by like trying to snuff out their attacks before it happens, you know, like, so I'm constantly scanning the field, like trying to, you know, see where we're vulnerable, see where they um, might attack us and, you know, put an end to it before it comes. And so by getting really like, into that because you know there's not any fun diving around or passing (laughs) or things like that um i just kind of redirect my efforts into that and so that becomes fun for me and something that's that's engaging on the um more the quieter games you can say yeah um i love it that's really good stuff um so much of this is connected to mindfulness training um like you, I can just tell, um, and even if you don't even mean it to be that connected, it just is. Um, can you just talk about you, the beginning for you of like, you know, I'm going to check this out and how it was and where you are now with your, how you use it, train it. Yeah. My personal practice is journaling. Um, I was never really excited about the idea of just like, sitting there with my thoughts yeah yeah <laughs> so for me i found it beneficial to write it down and to because that would allow um, me to kind of get it out of my head yep. to clear my head so i could be present i could be free to play my very best so i started journaling um in college and um i've been doing it pretty much every day since um Dear. so about almost 10 years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's kind of like a, for me, practically, it's more of like a stream of consci- consciousness writing mm-hmm. where, um, yeah, I'll just get out whatever I have in the morning. Definitely in the morning um, is the most important because then it, it sets the stage for the rest of my day. So you, I was um, going to ask you what time of day that you, yeah. that you do it. So it's, it's morning morning i'll have my breakfast um read my bible and then get out my journal um and yeah some days i don't really have anything to write about but mm-hmm. i actually find that that's kind of when it's the most beneficial and um yeah i don't always want to do it either why but why, why do you feel like in those days it's most beneficial when there's not a lot there um because i think that's when it, i really get into like what is in my head because yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's not so much noise. It's like, okay, Good. I've gotten rid of the noise. Like now what's left, um, you know, what's important to me? What am I, you know, thinking about? That's when I kind of uncover like the hidden thoughts, so to speak, um, you know, whether that be fair fears that I'm not necessarily aware of or sure. things I can't even really articulate, but, um, but yeah, so that kind of, you know, helps me you know, frame the day. And um, so, yeah, so rather than um, doing mindfulness where um, I'm just kind of meditating, I, I'm, I like to journal more. Okay. Do you find that because you've done it, that that noise that you referred to is over the years less? So just by the practice of doing it, do you feel that it's, it's actually quieted the noise um, that you had. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm able to sleep better. I used to be up really late because I would just have so many thoughts going through my mind. Yeah. Um, And I've also become better at acting on things um, because I've realized, okay, like I need to do something about this. Like for the past week, I've, you know, written about this, I'll say my sister is, you know, annoying me about 
I don't know, something or other. You Shout know? out to your sister. Yeah. <laughs> but you can pick up those patterns and it's like, okay, I can't ignore this anymore. Like, so for me, by yeah. writing it down, it kind of gives it its own life, so to speak, yeah. by getting it out of my head and putting it on paper. So, um, yeah, I, I find that I act on things more rather than just keeping it in my head. Um, so does my it also, anxiety is less, for sure. Does it also, because I love that, I agree with you, I think that's one of the, um, <laughs> that's one of the bonuses of mindfulness is that it teaches us, like, yeah, this conversation has to happen, or right. I need yeah, to sure. I need to do this, or or whatever. But vice versa, I think what it also does is, at least for me, I'll I'll say it like this, and I think it's you know relatively proven. But I'm interested to know you is like, is it? Do you have those moments where you also realize actually this doesn't matter, so I shouldn't even be like it's just mm -hmm. it's this thing that I don't need to act on, and in fact I shouldn't have this thing taking up the mental space that it is. Yeah, like sometimes once I realize a thought and you know write it down or i'm thinking about it and i'm like why <laughs> right, right um yeah, yeah why is this yeah. taking up this room in my head right now yeah that's that's true because once you can kind of yeah verbalize it or um you know write it down then you can kind of evaluate its truth like yep. is this rational like yes Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Most times totally. it's not. <laughs> well, you know, I think one of the, you know, again, part of the, the great part of mental training, is, especially using mindfulness, is the idea that, you know, our mind is always on. Like, we don't even mm -hmm. realize how on our mind is. So it's nonstop, right? Half of the things that we think about maybe matter. The other ones are just these really, like, kind of basically relatively useless slash random thoughts that that can however like grab us and take mm -hmm. us somewhere and if we really evaluate we're like what are we doing like i'm down like this path i don't even need to be on and this is like wasted focus wasted mental energy and relatively useless but until you do that right like so that's part of the whole self-awareness process is like realizing how many thoughts are basically useless that I used to listen to, however, and believe, like I actually believed that that mattered. And mm -hmm. now I realize it, it really doesn't, it's kind of useless. And so it's easier to just kind of let it go, which then comes back to why it matters on the field, which is, I need to be able to like, yeah, I could be pissed and I can be frustrated and I can do all this because, because we let up a goal or I can move on. And no matter how much I'm pissed, no matter how frustrated I am, no matter how much I want to blame me, do I want to blame a defender? Do I want to play bad? You know, whatever. It really doesn't matter because it's over. Like, mm -hmm. it does not matter. Yeah. We're not going to change it. So me focusing on it is useless attention. What matters now? And that's, that's everything that we're attempting to do over and over and over and over again throughout a match or whatever sport that, that you happen to be playing. Um, all right. Well, I try to keep this to a half hour and I can't believe it, but we already eh, like just went through crazy. a half hour. So are you cool with us doing a quick mindfulness session together? I will take you a little bit through a breathing session, um, but maybe we'll do a little bit different um, so that it's not pure um, just breathing, but I'll get us started with a little bit of breathing sure. and then, and then move into it. But it's cool to bring everybody in and, and to do it together. And so, yeah. um, all right, you go with that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So um, first, just do this. I hope, I, I think you might be on a bed. I can't tell, but if you- I've, if, I've got a chair. Okay, you're on a chair. Okay, cool. So um, what, I, what I always ask is, <laughs> is to be, um, you know, sitting upright and engaged, both feet on the floor, hands resting comfortably in front of you. And go ahead and um, close your eyes. And what we're going to do is start off with what I call three big 617 breaths. So what I want you to do is go in through the nose for a count of six. And then you hold for one. And then a full exhale out for a count of seven. All 
And we're gonna do two more reps. Really wanna feel your rib cage expand, your belly fill up. And then on that, just get every last bit out on the exhale. And what we should feel is a little bit of the relaxation response begin to kick in and the mind becoming more present. And now what I want you to do is just find whatever feels normal and regular for you. Whatever your regular rhythm is in your breathing, just try to find that. And just try to follow the inhale and then the exhale for a moment. And we're going to use the breath as home base. It's going to be the anchor to the present moment. So anything that happened earlier today is over. Anything that you need to do yet tonight has not happened. So all you're trying to do right now is become totally in the present moment and just use the full length of the inhale and the full length of the exhale to ground you to the here and now. And what we're gonna find is that the mind's gonna wander, get distracted, think other thoughts. And the moment that you experience that, don't fight it, don't get angry, don't judge it. Just notice my mind was distracted and then return it to the present moment using your breath as the anchor that brings you back. And every time that you do that, that's another rep. That's how we build mental muscle. My mind was distracted and now it's bringing it back to the present moment without any other noise, no other words, don't need to label it. You're not bad at this. Just allow yourself to notice the distraction and bring it back to the here and now. Stay with it. Again, every time that your mind's distracted and you become aware of it and you bring it back, that's like doing another rep. That's being able to move from the mistake potentially back to the present moment. What matters right now? And now let's switch the focus for a moment. Let's now I want you to feel through your body. So use your body to bring you to the present. I want you to feel your back against the chair where your hands are resting, back of your legs against the seat, where your feet are connected and grounded to the floor. And just take notice to that. Allow your body sensations to bring you to this moment. Again, if your mind gets distracted, you don't need to say anything to yourself. You don't need to judge anything. Just notice your body. Where do you feel your body connected? 
and use that to bring you back to the present moment. Every time you lose attention and regain attention is another rep. That's training you to focus on what you want to focus on. All right, one more change. Give me one last big 617 breath. Feel your feet connected to the ground beneath you and go ahead and open up your eyes when you're ready. All right. So the whole idea, right, is to just train that mental muscle, that ability to say that happened. I'm not going to do any of the noise. I'm not going to add any kind of judgment to whatever happened because that just becomes loud and distracting. And I'm just going to bring it back. And if I have to do that a hundred times, then that's what I'm going to do. And so some people, you know, I think, again, going back to something you mentioned earlier around that, like the Zen part of it is like, yeah. I'm just completely like void. I'm just like sitting quietly and with nothing going on. And, and the reality is that's not really what it's like. It's actually, you know, there's all sorts of distractions. And, and the goal is really not so much that I am focused for 10 minutes, but that I refocus mm. 30 times within that 10 minutes, because in a match, the reality is, is you have to continually refocus, 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 right? You know, like, sometimes you can catch something out of the corner of your eye, like up in the stands, maybe, and you're yeah. like, what am I doing? Like, be back here, you know, or pretty you, sunsets, you, yeah, like you, especially for keepers, right? Like, you know, right. like, you know, you have some time every now and again. So the idea isn't um, to be completely locked in. It's kind of because uh, it's not going to happen. It's can I continually get myself where I want? And if something negative happens, can I let go of that and be right here again? And I may have to do that over and over and over and over again. And that muscle takes it's not real muscle, but you get what I'm saying, right. takes work. Yeah. Right. That takes work because it's not simple to do. It's easy to get caught on to the wrong path. And so that's why we train it. So awesome. Um, thank you. Um, any last thoughts, questions that you have before we wrap up? I'm just curious, like, how long do you recommend, like, to achieve maximal benefit? Like, what do you set your timer for 15 minutes? Do that in the morning? Um, what have you found in research or practice that, that helps the most? Yeah, the, the research basically says that if you can do 10 minutes a day, you're, you're probably going to get, um, the, you know, the benefits, um, mm -hmm. at least to start there. The, the, but the big part of it is, is the daily part. So I love when you said like, I do this in the morning yeah. and I don't know, but I do it every day. Like that, yeah. like, like that to me is what the research is really, really clear about. It don't just use it on the days where like, oh man, I want to get calm. So I'm going to do this today. No, do it in the good days, do it in the bad days, but do it every single day because that is the training, right? It's, you know, it's a little bit like our sport. Like, you don't just train one day. Right. Like, you could have the greatest training session in the world, but, like, you better do it pretty regularly or you're going to get out of it. And you're from a fitness standpoint, you know, if you just try, look, I'm going to really work out today. Okay. I mean, it's better yeah. than not working <laughs> out, but it's really about staying fit. And if right. you think about it like that, um, that's the way. So, really, the big part is, I would say, typically, you want to try to go 10 minutes. Um okay. And you want to, um, you know, and, and you want to do it regularly. And so, but, and there's a ton of apps out there. Mm -hmm. I, I have my own app that I created, um, which I should mention every time I do this and I'm terrible yeah. at doing there that. You go. <laughs> it's do so D O 
S O and it's in the app store. You can, you know, you can download it and it's 10 minutes and it's the, okay. the goal okay. is to use it daily. Uh, and mine is, you know, pretty sport specific. So it's, it's going to be some sports psych concepts and then finish it off with, with the mindfulness. Um, but, but there are other apps out there that are just going to do 10 minutes of just maybe what I would call more pure mindfulness training. Um, but, but the goal is to do it. And, and uh, to me, man, it, the, you know, it, the mental game is so much harder than what people believe it to be. And it's not just about knowing what you should do. It's about training to be able to do it in the most chaotic consequential moments. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's, it's easy to talk about what the mind should do or what we want it to do. It's not so easy to pull it off. Um, and so this to me is the training that we do in between sessions so that the mind is sharp and ready to go when we really need it. Yeah. Hope, hope that covered it. Yeah. No, um, anything that you want to promote? Is there anything that you have going on uh, that you want to promote? No, nope, just here at National Team Camp. The game yes. is on Friday against the Netherlands, so that'll be fun for everyone to All right. Watch. Where can we find it? Can we find it? Where? What will uh, I think it's on ESPN2. Okay. 12th Eastern, so. All right. So we'll be making sure that we watch that. Yes. Um, Aubrey, thank you so much for being on. I love talking to you. Um, if any way, shape, or form I can be of service to you, don't ever hesitate to reach for, you know, being on with me. This was cool. Yeah, thank you. Really enjoyed that. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. All right. Talk to you soon. See you later. Bye. See ya.